avoid social media for the most part because whenever I do log on to Facebook or whatever I am confronted with so much that upsets and sickens me like conspiracy theories science denial but mostly what really bothers me are these displays of childism like a friend posted that she had some plants to give away some vegetable plants and someone responded oh I would love them. I have nothing to trade, but I'll trade my small children. Ha ha ha. Oh, just let me know which one you want. Ha ha ha. I hate my kids. I'd love to get rid of them. Ha 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 ha. Can't stand being with them. Ha 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 ha. Big joke. I see this all the time and it's just to, to realize how ubiquitous and how socially acceptable it is to hate your kids and to announce to the world that you can't stand them and want to be rid of them. Uh, I can't, I can't with this, but there's a lot more that really pisses me off, and, and uh, one of those things is dog worship, and just to see how prevalent it is, and just, uh, I'm going to talk today about pit nuttery. I used to spend a lot of time on Facebook arguing with pit bull worshippers, but I've come to realize how futile it is, because these people are so indoctrinated by the pit bull cult, there's really no getting through to them. It's a pointless endeavor. It is a true exercise in futility. So I don't waste my time anymore. It's just, just a waste of time. So instead of arguing with dog worshippers, what I try to do is present facts and information in my videos and I hope that people who are not too far gone, who are not too invested in dog worship, will see how insane this whole dog culture is, especially the pit bull culture. I have talked about how dog worship is a spectrum and how pit bull worshipers fall at the extreme end of the spectrum. They are the epitome of irrationality, and anti-human sentiment. So I'm showing you a bunch of these uh, screenshots I made and memes I found on social media that showcase just how sick these people are, how anti-human they are. They actually advocate for the extinction of our species. So I don't engage in arguing with them anymore, like I said, but it was brought to my attention that a post was made on the Down With Dogs, A Menace to Society Facebook page, which I've talked about in previous videos. This is a wonderful page that raises awareness and regularly posts about the many different ways dogs are destructive to our society, to animals, to the environment. I strongly encourage you to go and follow this page if you're on Facebook and to share the many posts. About a week ago, a post was made on this page and someone told me, you need to go check it out. It's so crazy. Uh, you should make a video about it and show people how crazy these pit nutters are. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to talk about this post. This post is just a typical example of what goes down whenever you try to interact with these pit bull worshippers? I'm going to show you how irrational and anti-human they are. So a post was made on someone's Facebook page. A person posted about how they were attacked by their dog, how their dog turned on them. And the posts were public. So... The owner of the Down With Dogs Facebook page found these posts and posted them. Now, there are some pictures included in the post, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to show them to you very briefly. They are horrific. So if you're squeamish, please turn away. I'm going to show them to you right now. All right, you can look. So 
This person wrote, this is Ali, the one who turned on us, and she has never showed any signs of turning on us before. We wild of never kept her around. Had she done this before, she is scheduled to be put down. Now, someone responded with, sad, just glad you guys are alive. She is a beautiful pup. Auntie will miss her. Uh, there are other pictures of the dog on this person's page. The dog's cuddling with the person, whatever. Beautiful pup, right? There were a lot of comments. Many people flocked to the Down With Dogs at Menace to Society Facebook page in defense of the dog. The victim herself was defending the dog. Her family members were there defending the dog, defending pit bull type dogs. There were the usual pictures of pit bulls cuddling with babies as proof these dogs are safe to have around. I can't go through all of the comments. Obviously, this video would go on forever, but I will touch upon a few of them. Like this one, the owner of the Down With Dogs page posted a link to uh, a post in the dangers of pit bull activists living among us, which I'll share in the description. It is filled with links to many medical studies, medical peer-reviewed dog bite studies that prove pit bull type dogs are dangerous, much more dangerous than other breeds. There are links to many expert opinions all of these experts saying that these dogs are not safe to have around, especially around children. And what is this pit nutter's response to all of these peer-reviewed medical studies? Her response is, where's your statistics, your reliable evidence, your research, or is Facebook stories it? Well, we did not just present you with Facebook stories. We just presented you with a vast amount of statistics, reliable evidence, and research. See, this is what I'm talking about. When you try to talk to these people, they don't listen. They don't hear what you're saying. They don't accept what is right in front of them. How can you, how can you debate with someone like this? Dog rationalists were pointing out how dog ownership is child endangerment. I totally agree. They wrote, I believe anyone whose child is killed or injured by their dog should be charged with child neglect and child abuse. Well, I would take it a step further and charge them with murder. There were pictures posted in response to those harmless pity pictures. Oh, look at this pity. Would my pity ever harm anyone? It's so pity. Yeah, well, look at this picture of a sweet, affectionate pit bull. Is this proof that this dog would never harm anyone? Well, no, because it actually killed this three-week-old baby after the picture was taken. Do these people seriously believe that dogs that attack and rip people's faces off never, ever, ever showed any affection in the past? Do they believe that these dogs were acting viciously every second of their lives 24-7? I just don't understand how these people think. There are so many examples of dogs that were so sweet and affectionate that went on to attack people unprovoked. People of all ages, babies as they slept in their cribs or sat in their bouncy chairs or their car seats. So... All of this is lost on them. When you show them evidence like this, they completely disregard it. It has no effect on them whatsoever, and they continue to post pictures of their affectionate dogs as though the pictures are proof their dogs are not dangerous. Not only do they disregard your evidence, they will laugh at it. They laugh at pictures like this one. See the laughing emoji? And then they'll say, oh, so your source is a meme. Your source is not based on actual facts or statistics. Well, we presented you with facts and statistics earlier, which you ignored. So, and, and this picture is not just a meme. You can easily Google her name and read the report, read what happened. But these people don't read the reports. When you talk about reports, they'll deny it and say, oh, it's only anecdotal evidence. And yet they present their own anecdotal evidence, their pictures of their affectionate pit bulls, as proof 
that the dogs are safe to have around. It's mental. Here, the victim of the attack, you know the pictures I showed you at the beginning of the woman with the mangled arm? Well, this is her, and she writes, you are trying to educate people with wrong facts, period. You're an ass, and anyone who follows or believes what you say and post are just as bad. So the owner of the page asks, please tell us the facts then. Go to hell, the victim replies. Please tell us the facts. No point, your damage is done. What? You are the one who is damaged. Please feel free to tell us what happened so no one else need go through what you are going through. Then the victim writes, they aren't beasts. You're fucked up. Oh, well, thanks for those facts. <laughs> Stop using my life event and family photos for your hate acts. Well, you know what? If you didn't want your photos to be posted publicly on the internet, you shouldn't have posted them publicly on the internet. Keep them private. It's very easy to adjust your privacy settings. These pitbull apologists are so intent on making us look bad, making us look evil and just hateful and awful people. They always accuse us of hate acts. And what the owner of the page writes here is very important. Educating people on dangerous dog breeds is not a hate act. Hate is inflicting these wild, unpredictable, dangerous dogs on the rest of us. You chose to bring this dog into your life, putting everyone else at risk. I am sorry you got hurt, but I'm glad it wasn't an innocent bystander or child. The more that people see and understand what this type of breed of dog is capable of, the sooner society will become safer. But these people refuse. They cannot accept that we are motivated by concern and compassion and empathy and love. No, nope, they just have to paint us as the hateful ones, which is so completely wrong. They are the ones with the hateful agenda defending these maulers. So finally, the victim offers us an explanation. She gives us the facts. Apparently, the dog was abused, severely abused. And things like another dog being hurt can turn them. Any dog can do this. Right, I'd like to see a dachshund or a, a shih tzu tear someone's arm open this way. But apparently, any dog can do this. You don't deserve an explanation, quite frankly, because you're fucking idiotic and think that you know everything when you don't know shit. Pitbulls are not the reason. People use, abuse, and fight them because they are strong. And then, when these dogs are brought out of fighting rings and shit because people did this to them, we try to give them a second chance at life sometimes. The dog's abuse was so great that we don't even know, and bad things can happen. But guess what? Once again, this happens to other breeds too. Oh, really? Where are all the reports of the border collie and Afghan hound maulings? So again, she writes, you don't know anything, so stop speaking on a topic you know nothing about. I like this response. Funny how in just about every dog attack report, they state the dog was raised from puppyhood in a loving home, never showed any aggression. Everyone is always surprised, never saw it coming. You are lying to protect these monsters that have it in their DNA to attack unprovoked, saying ridiculous things like any dog can do this, a poodle won't do this, a bichon frieze won't do this, a whippet won't do this, a cocker spaniel won't do this, saying all dogs bite is like comparing a goldfish to a shark. You are spreading myths, telling lies, sharing misinformation, and people are getting their faces ripped off and their loved ones killed because of people like you. You are disgusting. Shame on you. This is just common sense. Other breeds don't have the ability to do that sort of damage that I showed you in the pictures at the beginning. They can't rip your arm open like that. It's not possible. They're not physically able to do that. But this is lost on them. These people just continue to argue that all dogs bite. It's crazy. Look what this so-called animal lover writes in response. Not everyone wants to own a little rat for a dog. Any large breed dog has the ability to tear someone's arm to shreds. Really? This animal-hating pit bull apologist thinks that because they work with dogs for a living, they can speak without sounding ignorant. Well, you do sound completely ignorant. 
Obviously, you don't read statistics. You don't read reports. Why do I not see Bernese Mountain Dogs or Bloodhounds or Great Danes on this list? These are all large breeds, but they are more gentle because they were not bred to fight. I, I just don't understand. These people are so out to lunch. It's ridiculous. What logic is there to say we shouldn't discriminate against pit bulls, then discriminate on little dogs by calling them rats? There's no logic in this whatsoever. I made a video about how dog worshippers have psychopathic characteristics. If you haven't watched that video, please do. One of the characteristics is that psychopaths tend to perform poorly academically. Now, one thing you will notice when engaging with these pit bull advocates is that their grammar is terrible. They can't seem to spell. Oftentimes, it seems they can't write a coherent sentence. A little rat, someone wrote. Way to talk about dogs, animal lover. You call yourself an animal lover? Wow, that's some way to talk about creatures you supposedly love. All right then, what about a borzoi or a greyhound? I've never heard of a borzoi mauling because borzois are large dogs, but no, it just has to be a fighting breed, doesn't it? Admit it, you just want to look badass. Or is it virtue signaling? Look at me, I'm such a good person for rescuing this poor, misunderstood breed. Or is it that you get a thrill out of owning a dog that has the ability to rip your limbs off? Does that excite you? Like bungee jumping? You like the thrill? Which is it? Someone shared some indisputable facts about dogs which dog worshippers continue to ignore. The fact that they cannot love. They are incapable of experiencing the emotions of guilt and remorse, which you need to be able to feel before you can love. Only 3% of the human population are sociopaths, which means they are lacking the ability to experience those emotions. But all dogs lack the ability to experience those emotions. Only sick humans kill without remorse or harm others without remorse, but all dogs can do that because they all lack remorse. That is the difference. Also, you cannot train or love instincts out of dogs. It doesn't matter how the dog is raised. It has nothing to do with the owner. They are predators. As much as you try to humanize them, they are predators, and they will always be predators. Again, it's emphasized that we are not about hate. We are about raising awareness. We are about love. We don't want this happening to someone else because we care about humans. Why don't you care about humans? This woman knew the dog was severely abused and yet still took the dog in her home where her child is. She's so damn lucky it was her arm and not that precious child's face. These people believe it's all in how you raise them. It isn't. It has nothing to do with how the dog is raised, but that's what they believe. So if you believe that, why on earth would you bring a dog with such a history into your home? If you care about your children, you would never dream of doing that. If you care about others in your community, you would never for a second dream of doing such a thing. They claim the dog had been a bait dog and that the attack happened in response to the owner stepping on another dog by accident. Uh, someone wrote, if I get this right, the pit bull that pulverized her arm was a bait dog and attacked another dog that was stepped on and probably yelped. The yelping triggered the bait dog and the woman tried to stop the beast from killing their other dog. So it redirected and attacked not only this woman, but also her husband. It was never a bait dog. That's a big fat lie shelters tell. So the person adopting the thing can feel like they are extra special. Bait dogs don't make it out alive. And who in their right mind would take an alleged bait dog into their home with children? The owner of the page wrote, I wouldn't even necessarily believe this. In the first posts, the owner just says that the dog turned on them. No mention of another dog. I think this is just an effort to make excuses. Sickening that the whole family seem to care more for dogs than they do people's well-being. It's a cult for sure. It sure is. They just go on relentlessly defending this thing. 
they are not monsters. You're a monsters for trying to make it seem like these dogs don't deserve happy lives because they most definitely do. They deserve a happy life more than you. How fucked up is it that you will sit there and hate on a breed when you've obviously never met one? This dog is a very loving and caring dog. You do not know anything about what happened. And if they're going to take shit from her page, then they should take the whole story. Get the fuck out of here with all your hate. You people are sick getting amusement from a family's tragedy. <laughs> Where do I begin? These dogs deserve a happy life? Why? What have they done? Why are they exceptional? Why are they more deserving of a happy life than cows or pigs that are routinely castrated without anesthetic? Or chickens that have their beaks cut off routinely without anesthetic? Why are they more deserving of a happy life than cows that are repeatedly artificially inseminated to give birth to babies that are then stolen from them? leaving them to grieve for weeks these gentle creatures that are very sensitive and then hooked up to these milking machines and and then and then impregnated again over and over and over to have this happen over and over and over again until they become so weak so spent their milk production drops and then they are sent to the slaughterhouse yeah that's a great life why do they deserve that miserable life these people with their selective compassion they don't care about animals and to say that we're hating on a breed when you've obviously never met one. I've met one. I brought my children to my friend's house when my friend got a pit bull. Back when I didn't know what to think about pit bulls. The dog was very sweet, very affectionate, very gentle, very nice with my kids. But guess what? I became informed. I looked into it and I learned about countless other people with these affectionate, sweet dogs that suddenly turned on them, surprising everyone, taking everyone by surprise by ripping someone's face off out of the blue, which is how it usually goes. These were dogs that were raised in loving homes. They were never mistreated or abused. And I couldn't deny this. I couldn't say, oh, they must be lying or whatever. And because there was no evidence that they were lying. There was no evidence that these dogs were being abused. So for me to say they must have been abused, that's crazy. Without evidence to prove these people were lying, I could not dismiss their stories. I could not dismiss the medical peer-reviewed studies that show clearly that these blocky-headed dogs are dangerous. I could not ignore the opinions of experts who advise us not to keep these dogs as pets because they are dangerous. I could not ignore the statistics. This dog is a very loving and caring dog. Are you serious? If it were a loving and caring dog, it would not have pulverized her arm. Even if it was startled. <laughs> And then, again, accusing us of being hateful. We are not the hateful ones. You are for pushing your maulers onto the rest of society. We are not sick. You are sick. Getting amusement from a family's tragedy? Nobody is amused here. We are trying to raise awareness so that this will not happen to anyone again. We are horrified. We are saddened. We are shocked, we are bewildered, but we are not amused. Someone wrote, every owner says their dog is so sweet and loving and would never hurt a fly until it rips someone's throat out in an unprovoked attack. Read the reports. Just because something didn't happen to you yet doesn't mean it isn't happening to others every day. Oh wait, it did happen to you. It happened to them and yet they still defend the dog. You know, this is crazy to anyone who is outside the cult. To the cult members, this makes total sense somehow. Uh, but to anyone who is not indoctrinated by the pit bull cult, this is crazy. And these people argue from the specific to the general. I talked about this in my video about logical fallacies. They say, well, I raised my dog well, and my dog never attacked anyone. Therefore... If other people raise their dogs well, like I did, their dogs will not attack anyone either. That's, you, you can't make that argument. It's a logical fallacy. Other owners who are raising their dogs exactly the way you did are having very different outcomes. Recently, I uploaded a video about ageism, 
about how prevalent it is, about the casual use of the expression, okay, boomer, and, and, and just about how this discrimination against older people is just so socially acceptable and invisible in our society. People don't even recognize it. We have a fine example of ageism in the comments. Someone addressed the owner of the Facebook page and wrote, are you like some mild aged to old person? I assume they meant mid aged. You know, this is just an example of how anti-human and unloving they are. These people claim to be morally superior they they believe they are the more loving ones and that we are the hateful ones. Look at them. Look at their despicable words, their despicable attitudes. They kept posting image after image of dogs being affectionate as though this is supposed to convince us that they are harmless or dogs wearing shower caps. Like, oh yeah, I'm convinced now. I, I guess dogs are not bloodthirsty predators. That moment in time when a pit bull picked up a rubber ducky after you placed a shower cap on its head discredits all of my arguments. Clearly, I'm wrong about everything. You know, that's exactly how every sweet pity looks before it kills someone. Oh, it just went on and on with these pictures, like, oh, such an aggressive dog, I tell you, as if they look aggressive every moment, every second of their lives up until the moment they attack. Just insane. Claiming pit bulls are good dogs because of your personal experience with one is irrational. Just because something hasn't happened to you yet doesn't mean it isn't happening to others because it is. It is very short-sighted. It's like saying, I smoked all my life and I never got cancer. Therefore, cigarettes are harmless if you smoke them right. It's exactly like that. It's so crazy. You were lucky. That's it. That's all. Why does someone react with a laughing emoji to this statement of an indisputable fact? Some breeds were bred to have a higher prey drive than other breeds. That is a fact. On and on and on, the pit bull apologists go with their denial of facts, denial of statistics, with their logical fallacies, with all the same old tired arguments that we hear over and over and over, the laughing emojis in response to indisputable facts, the ageist comments, the continued false assertions that we are ignorant and hateful, it's just a complete waste of time, even if it were true that it's all in how you raise them which it isn't, but even if it were true, bully breeds still need to be banned because there's no way to regulate how people raise them. They are completely unnecessary. There are so many other breeds to choose from. We do not need to have these monsters around. And, you know, they just went on and on sharing these bogus stories that I've made videos about when you look into them. They are all false claims I talk about this in my video called Dogs Are Not Heroes. You know, oh, heroic dog saves child from a snake, when in reality, the dog was just fucking with the snake, harassing wildlife like they always do, and then ended up killing the snake. When the snake posed no threat to the child, it was just minding its own business, you know, or the dog saves family from a burning building, when it was just barking because of its own self-interest. It, it wasn't motivated by a desire to save anyone but these dog worshippers will spin it in a way to make the dog look like a hero when it is not behaving heroically whatsoever it's just a bunch of brainwash a bunch of propaganda and then they share this uh link to another site that similar to the canine journal website is misusing statistics which i've made a video about it's just the same old excuses, the same old arguments that make no sense, just lies, propaganda, and it's just sickening. You know, when I see things like this, this is why I don't go onto these pages much at all, because I just feel sick when I see how insane all of this is. I can't believe that we put up with this. 
I can't believe we tolerate this. I can't believe the stupidity of these people. They always bring up the fact that you have a greater chance of dying in a cataclysmic storm or from a wasp or bee sting or from choking on food or in a transportation vehicle accident or whatever. This is just like saying, oh, you have a greater chance of dying from cancer than from murder. Uh, therefore, murder should be legal. Or you have a much higher chance of dying from choking on food than you do from being injured by a drunk driver. Therefore, we should lift bans on drunk driving. We should make drunk driving legal. Crazy. You know, there are some things you can't avoid. We can't avoid wasps and bees sometimes. They're in our environment. We can't stop storms. Some people really need to use a car. They, you know, but we don't need dogs. You know, we need to eat. Yeah, there's a chance of choking, but what are you going to do? You're going to stop eating? Yeah, humans might kill more people than dogs do, but what are you going to do? Get rid of humans? We would die. As a social species, we need other humans to survive. So we cannot ban humans, but we should be trying to eliminate risk. We should be trying to reduce risk. In the case of dogs, we can eliminate risk entirely by banning dog ownership. I realize not a lot of people are going to go for that. So therefore, we should reduce risk by banning bully breeds. You see the screenshot I'm showing you right here? A pit bull advocate wrote that they would gladly defend any creature that doesn't have a voice to defend itself. I wonder why... They don't defend babies. Babies don't have voices, right? I'm sure babies don't appreciate being ripped apart by dogs. Why not defend them if you're so bent on defending those that don't have a voice? You know, it's not just bully breeds that are mauling and killing people. But if we would ban bully breeds, we would see a drastic reduction in the number of cases of people mauled and killed by dogs. We simply don't need dogs. They are unnecessary, unlike the other things. These attacks are completely preventable, unlike those other things, like choking on food or whatever. So thanks for watching. I urge you to check out the National Pitbull Victim Awareness website, dogsbite.org, as well as the numerous uh, pages and groups on Facebook, that work very hard to raise awareness, I ask you to please share this information, share the articles, make people aware. Not enough people are aware of this problem. Engaging with cult members is pointless, but we must reach out to other people who are not as far gone and show them how serious this problem is and how deranged these people are. This is a serious mental disorder that will one day be recognized by the medical community, and that day cannot come soon enough. The future is dog-free.